Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We did some exploring around Hearthome City last time. We were able to visit Amity Square. Have our Pokemon follow us. Samuel was a little excited. But for now, we've got a little bit of a surprise. No, this isn't a surprise. But it's the best part of the game if you like parts of the game that are great. But uh, yeah, this woman, a little. En français, excusez-moi. Talking to us about entering contest shows. Also refers to herself in third person. This is Fantina. She is the gym leader of Hearthome City. And we will be challenging her eventually, but not yet. For now, we're gonna explore the contest hall and see what this is all about. This is Kyra and Mom. Good to see you, Mom. Still wearing your belly warmer out of the house. And her name's Joanna, so that's interesting. I didn't know Mom had a name. I thought moms were all just named Mom. So there's that. See? She didn't even know either. <coughs> so we briefly met Kyra. She was the one who we talked to in the Pofin Center, I think. Maybe. She's not super generic, but, you know, kind of forgettable. So she's giving us more stickers for our balls, great. And she wants our balls to be sophisticated and glamorous. I respect that. Thank you. So she is the show judge of the contest hall. Seems like our mom is kind of keen on contests. And so clearly, hearth home being the happening spot for vacations, here mom is. And she's surprised too, probably thought we were gonna be dead. Our corpse found in the wilderness being chewed on by wild Bidoofs. But if you come here, you can get a special surprise. The tuxedo. We are going to look fresh and funky and cool. So there we go. You don't know how you put on clothes? Literally and figuratively. So great. <coughs> So if you have the Pofin case, which we already showed how to make Pofin a little bit, you get this mild Pofin. I don't know what any of this does. And, uh, yeah. So, we'll probably do a practice session, because I don't really intend for this to be a huge part of this episode, because I couldn't really care less about contests. But I do want to show them off a little bit, so you see what, what they're all about. All about. What should you do? Give them some Pofins. Give them that spicy Pofin. Okay, so contests are a little involved, and if you give your Pokemon Pofin, apparently it's like a performance enhancing biscuit or something. So yes, let's let's practice here. Um, who who would be a good contester? Let's see. I think everybody likes balloons, so we'll go ahead and put Dimitri in there, and our contest move. Let's pick something good. Looks like Stockpile, for some reason, it has a lot of hype. And I don't have any ball capsules that I've made yet. So, I have not stuck anything to my balls yet. I will do that eventually, don't worry. We will have all kinds of interesting things. So here's the tutorial on Super Contests. Looks like it's uh, us, some sort of a gardener, maybe? A farmer, an old woman. So my marks for my customized ball capsule will probably be negative a thousand points, because I forgot to do that. Oh, this is not in the original. Oh boy, here we go. This seems like a Dance Dance Revolution thing. This is interesting, this was not in the Ruby and Sapphire. So we'll see if my experience of musicianship will work out. Okay, brilliant. We're doing great. Long notes, that's great, yeah. They sure are. If any of you have played Guitar Hero or maybe a, uh, a Dance Dance Revolution, this would maybe trigger you in a good way, maybe make you feel good inside. 
pretty tough. I'm not sure how I'm managing such an arduous task. I would love to fill up my gauge. Get all those height points. I don't look like it fills up your gauge very fast though. So you gotta really, you gotta really nail these notes, you know? We need to stay brilliant. Okay, and occasionally we can use, I did not, I did not do that. The game's doing it for me. Great. So you can get high points and you can use your contest move. So this sounds stunning. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this. This seems a little over the top. Kind of unnecessary. A weird inclusion of trying to make the contest part of the game more robust. And if you're into that, that's cool. I'm not trying to crap on your experiences with super contests, but I think the whole thing is uh, a little silly. So I guess that's that. I don't know if there's more super contests or not, but for the sake of my own sanity, I'm not gonna do one as much as I would love to. That doesn't really sound quite as fun as I would have imagined it could have been. So instead, I don't know if I need to heal, but I would like to actually swap out my team for a moment, I think. Let's check the boxes for a moment. I do actually have a combi. It was given to me by a generous compadre, compadrina. And I will swap it. Uh... I don't foresee myself using Sharon in this upcoming gym battle in the gym we're in currently. I know that Craig will also not be super useful. Once again, the fight that I'm going to do for this gym is going to be based on the leader that will all handle it differently. But first, we need to fight Barry. So go check out that contest. We're going to rough Barry up here for a moment. He wants to knuckle up here in the middle of the city, so we're going to do it. Put Barry in his place. I will say, though, this is still one of my favorite rival themes. I love Barry's theme a lot. It just carries with it an air of just chaos, which I kind of get from Barry. He seems like the kind of person who would wear a green scarf at all times and just be impulsive, completely incapable of decision-making and doing things normally. This is a required battle. You can't avoid this one. Not too bad. But yeah, what I'm going to do with my current setup is I intend to fight the gym with all of my Pokemon. But I'm going to take out the gym leader with Jest. The same amount of Pokemon that she has, which I believe is three. So, to make it more exciting and fun and probably brutal for me, why not? And apparently, Barry from Boston, he's gonna show something wicked smart. Pretty cool. So, we'll shoot our goo all over his Prinplup. It's the evolution of Piplup, if you couldn't tell. So, that's pretty nice. And why don't we flash it? Just for fun. Flash is kind of a cool move just because it does lower accuracy in the same way that a sand attack would do. Yes. Just the the frantic keyboard in the background and the and the symbols. It's a lot of fun. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here either. If you if you see in the background, it kind of looks like we're fighting in like outer space. Maybe it's because it's nighttime and this is the game trying to kind of juxtapose the time of day in the battle. I don't know. It's a little strange. But thankfully, in this case, we do have pretty good counters for basically everything that Barry has. So I'm not super worried. He ain't no thing. 
Ooh. Samuel wants to be a tough guy, huh? All right. Ooh, that's a tough choice. These are all really good moves. I don't know if I'm going to replace them. We're more of a special attacker, so... Hmm. I think we're going to hold off on Body Slam. We can always go in the underground and collect heart scales if we need to, to bolster our overwritten moves. You can do that. That's what heart scales do, I believe. In previous games, it's what they did. There's a a person who's a move relearner. And when you find that person, they will help you, crazy, relearn your moves. So if you overwrote something by accident, or if you go back and maybe your stats pan out in a way you weren't expecting, you will have the ability to go back and redo them in a, in a, in a meaningful way, as long as you have hard skills. So you gotta pay the price. They're not super hard to find though, which is, which is fine. I remember it being really frustrating in the past, especially in Ruby and Sapphire, because I think in order to get heart scales, you had to basically find love discs, and whew, that was a pain in the buns. I will tell you that. So I actually have something that is effective against every single member of Barry's team. Feels good to dunk on Barry. He is kind of the comic relief, and the stooge of this game, so we're just gonna let him have it. I'm actually really excited for having Murkrow and its Generation 4 evolution, which is fantastic. Keeping Murkrow on the team is gonna be a huge boon for us. That's right. Doesn't Barry have the cutest pouty face? Look at that. Isn't that adorable, everybody? What a little baby. That's right. We are the one thing standing in his way. And he wants to challenge the Veilstone Gem. So you have a choice. You don't have to do the gym in this city. I don't know if you can right away. We're going to pop into it in a moment and heal real quick. We're going to give it a peek. I don't know if you're able to approach this gym right away. I'm gonna pop in and see if the gym leader is home. If she's not, we'll make our way to Veilstone. That is the next big city on our path. So let's see what's shaking bacon over at the Arkham Gym. Here we go. This might be a mistake. Probably, all right, let's see what this guy says. I would love to challenge it. Well, okay. So, no Fantina. No gym for now. So, unfortunately, we'll have to come back. That's okay. But now that we've fought Barry, the way is clear. But before we do that, I actually do want to... I don't remember who it was. I think it actually was that guy. Nope, that's the wrong button. Whoop, get out of here, Poketch. Just kidding. All right. So let's see. Um, I need to make space. So I will, just for a moment, I'm going to be depositing some of the Pokemon. In this case, some is one. So good math. Here we go. I think this is the guy that was going to give us an egg. Yes. I would love that. And Salacion Town or Salacian Town, however you say that. Salakian Town. Maybe it's... A little harsher in the vowels. So yes, if you walk along with eggs, which was brought in, I keep hitting this wrong button. If you walk around with eggs for X amount of steps, then you will have the opportunity to hatch a Pokemon. This egg in particular is always going to be the same Pokemon, so don't sweat it. Everything that you do will wind up being the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I'm gonna put Brandy back in the team. And I'm going to, let's see. I do have a little bit of foresight into what's going to be happening here. I'm trying to think about who's not really going to be a great choice for the Jim and Veilstone. Which I don't want to spoil that, so I won't. We'll put Dimitri back and we'll bring Brandy along. The others will just kind of 
hang out in the box for now. That's okay. We'll make our way east instead. And we'll do some exploring. This area up ahead is kind of neat. As you'll see in a moment. So let's go ahead and fight strangers. It just makes me wonder, like I've said in previous... Oh, this is the breeder sprite. Okay, I thought it was a gardener. It makes me wonder how, in this universe, kind of where, where things lie. Like, is being a Pokemon trainer a job? Is it something that everybody just does casually, like a hobby? I know that there are certain cases where people use Pokemon as, like, slaves, you know, to move furniture in and out of their homes, as you see in Ruby and Sapphire. So I'm not entirely sure how this works. You know, we're seeing strangers in public, just oot and a boot, and, you know, it's our first instinct is to go up to them, and they will try to fight us if we don't try to fight them. So it makes me wonder, what is the... What's the reasoning behind this? Why is everybody so eager to use their, their pets to fight? It's an interesting situation, and I don't quite understand it. But I have no problem with destroying the hopes and dreams of people. That's a lot of fun. I don't know if we've actually seen Pichu yet, so that'll be fun. And of course, I put away Samuel, who is the one person, person, the one Pokemon that I have that actually has a move that'd be good to use against Pichu. In this case, the pure electric type Pichu, only weak to ground. And I don't have any ground types or ground moves, because I'm awesome. And this is actually a really poor choice to use Dimitri, because Dimitri is part flying, and Pichu being a, an electric type. But we are just too OP for Pichu. Can't handle our heat. And yeah, you're just, you're just getting absolute garbage experience here. You're not going to get a lot. That's unfortunate. But this could be a potential to have an opportunity to train Brandy up a little bit. Brandy is incredibly defensive, being that steel type. But Brandy does not pack a punch, unfortunately. So we're working on that. Okay, so this Badu is quite worried about us. A little empathy goes a long way. And we have acquired insomnia. Story of my life. Any viewers have trouble sleeping at night? Anybody have weird dreams? Maybe some sleep paralysis? Night terrors? Maybe you talk to yourself. Definitely cannot relate to that. I am a very sound sleeper where once my head hits the pillow, I fall fast asleep. I definitely don't stay up at night and see things, which I refer to as hallucinodreaming. I definitely don't do that. Definitely don't. Okay. So I don't know if there's any items in this pack. Ooh, some lady with a, looks like the evolution to Bidoof, Beeberl. I don't know if we've run into that, Justin Beeberl. Not sure if we've seen one yet, but I don't want a Staravia. We already have one in Sharon. But Sharon is not going to be... Actually, Sharon would be useful for the Veilstone City Gym, but I don't really need to double up on that. Let's see. This was a... Is this BB? Or just a random stranger? Great. That was fantastic, wasn't it? You come over here, get yourself a nice... Jar of honey. Slide that all over your body, whatever you're into. It's good for the skin. I believe this fisherman is going to show us how good his rod is. So I'm not trying to fish for compliments here or for help, but if you want to like, comment, and subscribe, do it. I love that. So here we go. This is our first fishing experience. I'm not sure I'm going to use this a ton in the game, because I don't really need to. But the fishing rod is a pretty fun little meta game thing to do in this case we have the good rod so it's just good it's not an old rod thankfully okay so i don't really know what the mechanic is like with this so we'll see what it looks like to catch something or not okay so i'm gonna give this one more try and if this does not work i will show off fishing later Third time's a charm, here we go! What did we catch, ladies and gentlemen? 
our good rod. Oh, it's a Magikarp, surprise. The different rods have different levels, different tiers, you could say, of quality of Pokemon that you'll catch. The good rod has a handful of lower tiered Pokemon, so you're not gonna really get a ton. But there's a rod that's even better. A rod that I would say is superior, superior to that. Okay, so we get more stickers for our balls. Everybody just really wants our balls to be beautiful, and I respect that, thank you. So here are actually two of the better berries in the game, the Lepa berries. If you have a small PP pee -pee and you need more energy, you can rub Lepa berries all over yourself and your PP pee -pee will be returned to your body. You will have more PP, power points. I'm not sure what you guys were thinking, but that's what it stands for. Okay, so we got a double battle here. And we're just gonna keep training on our way to Veilstone City. Let's go ahead and fight these twins. We can give them double the dose of, of a whooping. They're so cute with their Bonds Law and their Mime Jr. But it just feels like it's the right thing to do to destroy them in a Pokemon battle. Why not? So Brandy is still not great. But maybe Brandy will be eventually. I don't know. I'm going to keep the team relatively intact. Let's see how things will go. That Quick Claw is really paying off. Gyro Ball apparently really sucks as a move, not great. That's okay, Dimitri will carry the team here. Dimitri actually has pretty high stats for the time being, and was actually kind of the ace of the team for a moment. That's not gonna last for too long. Not sure where things will lie in the future, but you know. So let's check out Sweet Scent. Sweet scent that harshly lowers Pokemon's evasiveness. It also lowers wild Pokemon if used in grass. No, that is horrible. We are not going to use that. That is dumb. Oof, this is going to hurt. Not the best, but that's okay. We are going to... Try to figure out... You know, I do have a little bit of intuition, a little bit of foresight into upcoming gyms and fights, etc. So I'm, I am kind of trying to plan the team around those sorts of ideas. I'm not trying to spoil it for anybody who hasn't gotten this far in their game or hasn't played this one period. So I won't say what, what I'm thinking, but eventually it'll all make sense. I do love the sprite for Shadow Ball, not sprite animation. Looks like you're getting sucked into a black hole. That's pretty sweet. Oh, and Miguel just on the precipice of another level. Not quite. And Charlie wants to use, is it faint? Faint? It's not really how it's called faint. Use The attack hits a target using a move such as Protector Detect. This also lifts the effects of those. And I guess I don't really need both of the power up moves or both of the fighting moves, but this is kind of situational and stupid. Also, it's really weak. How am I going to beat up on children with weak moves like that? That's lame. I want to have super powerful moves to destroy. So there's a wild Pikachu here. Oh, it turns out it's another child. Okay. Wearing the onesie. Celebrate onesies. Pretty comfy and cozy. Pokey Kid Danielle. Surprisingly, she has a Pikachu, which is nice as they... Nice attention to detail is her Pikachu is female because a little kind of bubble look on its tail. Male Pikachus have just kind of this more straight looking tail and her costume matches her Pikachu. That's a really nice attention to detail. Good job, Game Freak. For all the things you did in this game that don't really make sense, that one does. So good for you. And I am really hoping that I can turn Brandy into a frustrating Pokemon to fight. Having a ton of HP, 
a ton of defense. Having moves like Infuse Ray. Big fan of that. Just the only downside is having such low attack stats that it's going to be definitely more of the wall variety. That'll probably be the plan if Brandy sticks on the team as a lifer. We'll see. I'm still going to be swapping Pokemon in now. I'm not entirely sure why she just keeps using Quick Attack. Maybe it's because she's a dumb kid. Doesn't know any better. We are also a dumb kid, so... This is just a battle to see who's a little bit less stupid. Great work, everybody. Brady gets a level up, catching up pretty quick. I'm actually wondering if I might swap in Craig here, just to gather some of this experience. Because I know with the upcoming gym what I'm going to be facing. So I don't quite need all of the members of this team. But I don't know if there's too many more trainers left. There might be some, okay. Nope, there's me hitting the wrong button again. Go ahead and count the amount of times I've done that in this episode alone. No, I do not want to save my adventure. Holy smokes, I cannot figure this out to save my life. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab Craig. And who do I not foresee being super useful? Hmm. I know Brandy will be. Dimitri probably would be too. I'm gonna go ahead and say Bart. I don't foresee Bart being super useful. And knowing my luck, I'm gonna fight a bunch of trainers that only exclusively use rock types or some garbage like that. Wouldn't that be awesome? So here we go, Pokemon Breeder. The idea of that's kind of weird to me. Um, I know that's obviously a part of like what people do for a living. Like if you breed animals to do things for whatever reason, you know, without getting into the details that make me feel. Ugh. Um, I know that's a thing, but like in this game, in Pokemon, I remember back in my gold and silver days where it was a situation where right outside Goldenrod, where the nursery is, the first one is that you encounter, where you would just find yourself a ditto out in the grass. I think that's where you could get one. And that ditto... That Ditto was going to be doing some work for you. You could basically mate anything with the Ditto. Now, the downside to that is that Ditto doesn't know moves. So it's purely for having potentially like a, a pre-evolution that you want to get in or maybe a... Uh, you just want to start fresh with a Pokemon. Because one of the big things that's in the breeding part of Pokemon are egg moves. So you've got certain Pokemon that can learn certain things based on the moves of the parents. Now I don't know the algorithms and how that works exactly, which parent is responsible for which thing. I couldn't tell you that. But I know that breeding is a little more complicated now than it's ever been. I mean, these games are always constantly trying to reinvent and add in new things, which is good. I mean, they're supposed to do that, but yeah, I just don't quite get it. I was, you know, I'm still kind of old school in my, in my lack of knowledge. I don't want to say things that I'm not willing to try. I'm open-minded for the most part, but you know, I've experienced my own growth in that way, but the situation of breathing is definitely different. I mean, heck, we became a parent just this episode with that Pokemon egg. We didn't ask for it. Well, actually, he did ask if we wanted it. Never mind. We volunteered, I guess, to be a parent. So go, go us. Okay, I have no idea what that means. Now, I don't know what this is. This looks a little spoopy. Oh. Uh, I think that's something we'll come back to. This guy is hanging out with his ghastly. Now, I think it's a nice touch that... I don't know if this is like an Amity Square thing where once you open stuff up, it... Okay, thanks. I don't know if this is once you open Amity Square that you... Other trainers will have their Pokemon follow as well. I'm not entirely sure. But I think that's kind of cool. If that is the case, then I'm all about it. I think it's nice. 
Here's some free raspberries. And I will approach that whole butthole, or ground butthole, this one over here, later. Because I'm kind of nervous. I don't know exactly what it does. I don't want to ruin my chance if it's something neat. But this is a battle that we're about to do. Okay. So we're making really good progress today. The area up above us. The reason why we're running into all these breeders and such is because it is a nursery. So that'll be kind of nice in the not too distant future. Yeah, and all these Pokemon are relatively weak. Um, it's hard not to have this happen. I mean, I'm even swapping Pokemon out all the time, a good rate. And my levels are still, you know, I'm still five and six levels higher than all of these Pokemon. So I don't know if this is meant to be like this or what, but there's not really a ton I can do. The experience hall just really kind of inflates. There's experience inflation in the market, and we're getting just no experience. So that's unfortunate. You'll obviously get a little bit more for whoever your lead Pokemon is, but, you know, fighting a bunch of Bidoof is not really going to do it. Unfortunately, the experience you get from Pokemon is different depending upon what tier it's in, but, you know, you're not going to get much from any Bidoof. Even though hers are going up a level at a time, Craig's big ol' headbutts having no problem taking it out. That bar is declining pretty fast. See if we can maybe get a level up for one of our Pokemon. I didn't see who it was. But this is a good opportunity to hopefully get... Oh, that one actually went down a level. This is a good opportunity to get maybe a couple quick, cheap levels. There you go. Steven gets a level up. That is very nice. Oh, she has five Bidoof. Wow. Talk about a talk about a goof with five Bidoof. Oof. That's all right. I'm not sure why you would want to have five of the same Pokemon. There's no variety. And if you were going to fight against the Hearth Home Gym Leader, you'd be useless. That's right. So apparently, we're too white collar for her. And our fancy Pokemon. Oops, sorry. Okay, there's a first. Oh, there's a patch of grass here. All right, there you go. There's the evolution, the Bidoof, the Beaverl. And I was like, baby, baby, baby. I don't remember it being on all fours like that. The sprite it had in Diamond and Pearl previously was like. Uh, it, it was bipedal. It was it was on his back legs. So that's kind of creepy looking. Especially with its eyes. Ugh, I don't like that. I don't know if this is, this is not a fight, apparently. Okay, so we need to eventually wind up going to the Lost Tower. Are there items in here? No, because that would be awesome. Of course not. Alright. We'll scamper through this grass. And not catch a Zubat. It's a shame that... I won't be having Crobat on this team. Crobat's actually one of my favorite Pokemon, because I think it's it's very strong, it's very quick, has a much better moveset than it used to. I did a, a run-through of Crystal about a year or two ago, and man, there's just not a whole lot that you can do with a Crobat. That was actually a little fun little jaunt. Kind of sounded like some ragtime music. Looks like they're doing a little swing dancing, maybe? Sue and Ty? Very privileged looking people. Can't imagine why. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and try to take these guys out. And then that crazy tower that we saw is actually something we'll dip into next time. But uh, Metatite. You're probably going to see quite a few of those in an upcoming gym. So you will want to plan accordingly. They are a pain in the butt. Being psychic and fighting, you'll need something. Perhaps a ghost type? Hmm? Would be nice to have. Flying types? Just make sure you're prepared. Okay. This Machop is a little bit... Of, oh, you knocked off my Quick Claw. What a turd. Alright. I'm actually going to switch Brandy out because I don't want to have to burn a revival item. And we'll see if 
Dimitri will be strong enough with its special attack to knock them a chop out. So Miguel will probably just be a placeholder. That's what I should have happen here. I think this Machop special defense is not that good. That is correct. And everybody gets experience this way. Nobody loses out. Everybody gets the participation trophy. I like how they're called the young couple. And he was, look, he's missing a nose. Somebody ripped your nose off. It's like when I play Got Your Nose with my nieces and nephews and they get very upset. Let's talk to this old man. Okay, so this is where the departed Pokemon sleep. This is the Lost Tower, and we'll explore that along with Vale soon next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I've been D-Mike, and I'll see you next time. Bye.